Um, hello, yeah, this is um, a sort of state of play of, of a project I'm working on uh, for building my own electric motorcycle um, because I've built various other, other motorcycles and now moved on to something electric. It's, it's using the, the, the methods and, and systems that uh, uh, an online group called openinverter.org and, and their forum have been generated, which takes a slightly different approach to hacking the components of electric vehicles and hybrid parts. I almost called this um, talk uh, How I'm Building a Monstrous Electric Vehicle from Hacked Scrap and Electric Vehicle Parts, but my project was on motorcycles, so that's what I chose as the, um, as the topic. Um, and with things like this is, is why, um, as uh, the, uh, the guy just said, I built uh, a diesel motorcycle. In fact, I built several diesel motorcycles, uh, four in total. Uh, one of them had a, a Volkswagen TDI Golf engine in it. Um, which is a, a turbo diesel bike, and, and that worked really well. And now I'm looking at moving on to something a bit more um, up to speed with current technology. I've also worked on many self-built electric vehicles. I, I used to work part-time or help a guy that, that sort of built and mended and, and converted uh, cars and kit cars. But that was... I don't know, whole numbers about 10 years ago, and it was all lead-acid batteries, big DC motors, and, and, and similar, so it's very different to what's available now. Um, I remember when I was doing that, the, the, the very new cars on the, on the game were the, the Prius and the Leaf, and they're, they're now um, very established uh, vehicles. I, I also enjoy technical challenge. I, I quite like that sort of thing. Uh, the novelty, the novelty of doing my own one. I put a question mark there because electric vehicles are no longer novel. Uh, and I got cheap because it's cheaper than buying new. Uh, again, that's a relative thing uh, because you've got your time. And of course, as I'll mention later on, the batteries, are, they, there's no cheap way around that. Um, and economy of use. Um, and then right at the bottom, the, the, the time is right. Um, and, and this is because uh, electric vehicles and hybrids especially are being around long enough that they're now in the breakers, they're, they're being broken, there's nothing special about the parts uh, which makes them cheap and especially the Prius which is what I'm going to focus on. Um, you, you can pick up parts of those, the, 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 the prices that are just not special at all, it's, it's quite good, so the time is right for that. And I'll go over briefly in this presentation about the main components, being the motor, the battery, uh, briefly about battery management, but I'm not going to go into that in detail, uh, the inverter or the power controller used for controlling the motor, um, charging, and then I was going to have a section on uh, chassis and wheels, but decided I couldn't really get it into half an hour, um, and besides the project really hasn't got that far. So. Um, um, the rest of the presentation is mostly going to be on how I'm going to do it rather than my previous presentations, which is in the blow-by-blow -blow stage of, of assembly to get over uh, mechanical issues. Um, so I'll start with things in a different order than my list, so I'll start with a battery. Um, so looking at existing electric vehicles, I've just picked two at random, being the Zero, which is a sports bike, and the Harley-Davidson Livewire, which is more of a cruiser. Uh, just for a ballpark look at, at how far you go. And, and the one has a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery in it, and the other one has a 15.5 kilowatt hour battery in it. And the one has a range depending on how fast you go, which is, is wind resistance, and, and the start of riding is between 112 and 156. So these are the sales um, quotes, and, and the Harley of 110 to 146. So, you know, you've got about between 100 and about 150 miles out of those two, um, which gives you an idea of how many watts or watt hours in energy per mile they're doing. And from that, you can back calculate and say, well, I'm building a similar vehicle with similar aerodynamics and a similar size with, you know, a similar chassis arrangement compared to a car. Um, so I'm going to get a similar power requirement uh, than these, which, which helps. It's, it's very difficult to work these things out um, in advance with any great technical accuracy. Um, 
Um, you, you can buy new batteries, but what I'm looking at is, is what's in the breakers, what can you buy? Um, and as, as I've mentioned, the hybrids and the electric vehicles are in the breakers, and unless you know what you're doing, these, these are quite weird things. There's a lot of places that are still terribly frightened, they're terrified of being electrocuted, which is a potential problem, but most of the, the batteries is, is, is when you cut the main 12-volt um, supply to it because all electric vehicles and hybrids have a 12 volt battery for running the, the lights and the radio and all the other systems uh, as a conventional car with, with, with the same voltage range of a, a 12 volt battery. Once you cut that internal, internally to the, the large traction battery, there's contactors which isolate it. So unless those isolators have malfunctioned, uh, you, you take the 12 volt battery off an electric car and the battery is safe to handle as a battery. I mean, when you take the lid off, that's, that's a different matter. Um, the technology of batteries is, is as we all know, it's all lithium. Um, uh, a majority are prismatic or rectangular cells in the electric cars. Uh, I believe there's only one manufacturer I can think of that still uses cylindrical cells. That's, you know, um, a choice. I don't know why everyone uses rectangular cells and then, and then another, another company still uses rounded ones. I've, I've not looked into the technical details enough to know why that's chosen. Um, but when looking at um, buying batteries, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a risky market because you don't know if you're buying a dead one or a good one or, you know, you take the case out and it's full of bricks. It's, it's, um, <laughs> it's, uh, you, you've got to do a bit of homework and trust the person you're buying it from will turn up with multimeters and tools. Um, uh, you can't just put a multimeter on an electric vehicle battery. You, you have to take the lid off and measure the cells. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a variant on that, but I'll come to that later on. Um, so, so the cost of the batteries, I, I spent a lot of time surfing eBay and online suppliers um, for, for a second-hand battery, and it was very difficult to say, is it a good deal, is it not, until um, I realised that if you look at the cost of the stored energy rather than the absolute cost of a battery pack. So, um, gone into, there we go. Gone into screen save mode. That's come back. Um, so if you look at the battery of ki kilowatt hours as the actual energy storage, divided by the cost of the actual battery, you end up with kilowatt hours, uh, sorry, price per kilowatt hour. And a low good price is, is 120 pounds per kilowatt hour. Um, if you just generally go looking, and, and they go up and up and up to £300 per kilowatt hour, e even more. Um, uh, so some people ask ridiculous prices because they still think that electric vehicle parts are, are really special and people still pay the money. Um, and the other thing is when looking for batteries is the known brands are always the favourites. When people say, oh, let's buy a... Let's buy a, a, a traction battery from an electric vehicle for running a project. Uh, whether it be motorcycle or hacky racer or something, they go, oh, yes, lose the Leaf. We've heard of the Leaf. And someone else says, no, let's use the Tesla battery because they've heard of the Tesla and they've seen the, the media propaganda that says they're the best in the world. Um, and then they ignore the fact that there's, there's now dozens of electric vehicles and hybrids and um, these stop-start cars have nice 48-volt batteries, uh, lithium batteries that are quite high discharge rate. Um, the, the price of those hasn't dropped yet. Um, so you could kind of think out the box a bit and, and just look at them as, as cells rather than branded parts. Um, so what I chose was a BMW i3 battery, and there it is outside of its enclosure. Um, each one of those eight modules uh, weighs, I think it's 20 kilos, uh, which is, is quite high, but not ridiculous compared to the the big turbo diesel motorcycle I bought when you think about the whole weight of the vehicle. Um, and for scale, there's a pair of gloves and the actual motor there all, all laid out um, as it was beginning of the, or th this was about a month before the pandemic hit and, and I was all keen to work on it. And then the pandemic hit and, and I had all the time in the world, but very limited income. So basically the project has been on hold until this spring again, because I couldn't afford to invest in it anymore. But anyway, um, it's a 96-cell uh, battery, 
uh, 94 amp hours, it's 33 kilowatt hours of, um, of, of power, um, and it's in 12, uh, uh, so eight 12 cell modules, so each module is, is 20, uh, t t uh, 48 volts. Um, and the other interesting thing, whether I cover it now or later on, is each of those modules has its own battery management system attached to it, and then they're daisy chained around um, the the pack. Uh, and then when I come on to talk about battery management in a moment, um, uh, people have reverse engineered the protocols, so you don't have to put your own battery management system on it. You can use the existing one and then use the hacked and open, now, not open source, but reverse engineered codes for um, for for then integrating that into your own system. Um, uh, the, the, one of the common things people say when I say I'm thinking about building an electric vehicle is, oh no, they say the battery life, what are you going to do when the, when the battery runs out? But there's been laboratory uh, tests on, on these particular cells and, and those tests have, have either been published or found and put up and um, the, the, these cells are rated at 4,600 cycles in average uh, usage, but 100% but depth of discharge, which is the worst case. Uh, it puts the most stress on the cells, going from completely fully charged to completely empty. Um, um, so that's 4,600 cycles until it's 80% depleted in usefulness, at which point it's considered end of life, even though it still would have a um, a huge uh, life after that, and the i3 that the battery came from could do a quoted 125 miles per full charge, and if you multiply those together, you get an expected life of 575,000 miles, which is way in excess of the average life of most vehicles these days. Um, within the original battery pack, there was uh, very simple heating to prevent uh, frost. And, and then there was quite a complex uh, HVAC um, air conditioning type chiller in there to stop the batteries from getting too hot. Um, this is incredibly difficult to reproduce, especially on a small vehicle like a motorcycle. Uh, so I'm going down the path of saying the UK is not an extreme climate. We're not a desert, we're not the Arctic. It's kind of damp and horrible the whole time, especially today. And. I'm not really expecting the, the, the very narrow operating zone to be exceeded in normal use. And if it does, um, I, I can just avoid the, the, the extreme power that they can't supply and I'll avoid rapid charging it in those conditions, which shouldn't be too, uh, too difficult to do and, and too much of a, of a hindrance. Um, the, I say the project is largely un, incomplete, but these are the batteries stacked up and I've got six in two rows of three with the other two on top, which forms like a, a low rectangular format. Um, so I'm gonna be building a battery box around those um, and then building a, um, a girder frame uh, around, around the battery box. Uh, just behind it, you can see the motor and then I, I've got a wheel on there pretending to be a seat, just trying to lay, lay things out. Um, I've covered this when I was looking at the battery, so most battery packs have the built-in um, battery management systems, it's been hacked. Uh, the other interesting thing is, is quite recently there's a, a company called Zephyr, it's an Australian company, and they've been making um, battery management systems for large electric vehicles, uh, which is quite special, you can't use the sort of thing you'd use on a model. Um, the radio controlled model because you're talking voltages, three, four hundred volts as, as, as nominal. Um, and it has to be isolated and everything else. And, and, and this company made battery management systems for kit builders. Um, and they've been doing it for 14 years. I think they're quite respected. And the reason I mention them here is they went out of business last autumn, which is not the sort of thing you want to um, announce. But they've kept their website open. They put a little bit of blurb in there. And they've kept their catalog and everything open. But instead of clicking on the the buy it now cart, it, it links to a zip file, and in the zip file you get circuit diagrams, Gerber's source code, um, the, the hex file to upload straight to the, 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 the micro, and they even got STLs for 3D printing your own cases and enclosures, which I thought was an amazing gesture from a company who decided not to operate anymore. Um, uh, and the motor. Um, 
uh, again, there's many motors available. Uh, I've chosen a Mitsubishi Outlander motor, which is the one pictured. Um, but there's, there's other ones like Leaf Prius, uh, the, the Lexus rear motor, which is a trans like this. Uh, the Outlander, Mitsubishi Outlander, which is this, which is a, is a motor gearbox. I don't know if you can see on there, you've got the motor on one side and then the gearbox. And then, and then there's the, the two ports you can't see because they're side on, that the axles will go straight out to the wheels. So, you know, if you were converting a car, you'd put one of these where the engine was, connect your shafts up, and, and that, that would be your drive system. It's, it's very simple. And, and of course, everyone loves a Tesla, so I put those in there as well. Um, and um, uh, basically, any EV or hybrid has the motor in it. They're all much the same. They're all what you call embedded permanent magnet motors. Um, I'll have a quick, a quick uh, picture of that in a minute. And, the commutation is determined by something called a, a resolver at the end of the motor that measures the absolute shaft position for generating the rotating magnetic field for things like field-oriented control, motor control. Um, for those that don't know what uh, an embedded permanent magnet motor is, is, is on the left you've got a conventional motor with the magnets around the outside of it, and then on an embedded permanent magnet motor the magnets are embedded within the iron core obviously a laminated core, and that um, I think allows it to spin a lot faster because they're locked within a, a, steel, in a steel cage, and it also allows the motor to act as a permanent magnet motor as well as at certain motors as a various um, in, induction motor as well. The, the resolver, so I don't want to go over time, is, looks complex, it's this weird looking thing on the left, and what that is is a inductively coupled position sensor. And in, in the middle, there's three coils. What You energize one coil, and then as the magnets, uh, the, not the magnets of the motor, but a second pickup magnet, or is it core, uh, iron core, sorry, it's an iron core, so inductively coupled. As that rotates, you get different peaks that are 90 degrees out of phase on the other two cores. And, and when you resolve those two, add, add them up, you get the shaft position, and, and that's an instantaneous, non-contact, very durable uh, device. It's, it's made of coils of wire and bits of steel. That's not going to go wrong, um, you, you, you hope. Um, and again, the reason I mention that is almost every electric vehicle has one in as part of the motor, and normally there would be a very expensive, dedicated um, chip that, re that performs this this function of energizing the coil and then getting the shaft position out. Um, but the guys in the Open Inverter Forum have um, worked out that you can energize it with the output from a microprocessor such as an STM32, which is their choice, um, with an op-amp buffer, and then you can read the inputs with an analog input and do the job in software. So, you know, that costs a couple of pounds worth of components uh, and is, is easy. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the motor I've chosen, again, is the Outlander motor. It's a 70 uh, kilowatt maximum peak. It's got 195 newton meters of torque, which is monstrous. And it weighs 40 kilos, which is chunky, but not out of this world. And you can get them in, in scrap price, two to 400 pounds uh, relatively regularly. Obviously, there's idiots out there who want 10 times that much, but you know, if you, if you get a real breaker who's got actual stock turnover, um, they're selling them a lot lower. Um, and there's people that reckon you can get, you know, sort of 50% more on top of those figures uh, for very short durations. Um, so that's, um, that should be quite exciting. Um, how I solve my transmission problems is, is on, on the left hand side is the motor and the right hand side there is, is the, um, is the gearbox I've chosen, and I've chosen the BMW motorbike gearbox because it fits the format of what I'm doing, and I've made a coupling using the insides of two clutches. One clutch from the original gearbox, and the other clutch plate um, was found by, by members of the opening inverter community who found a clutch that fitted the spline output of the motor. Um, because if you've ever walked into an engineering workshop and said, I want a coupler made with whoops, a couple of slides on it, um, splines on it, it gets quite expensive. And then when you say it's automotive, they get disinterested and go, oh no, there's another loon uh, coming to our workshop. 
but I made this up for the cost of two clutch plates, a lump of aluminium and, and an evening on, on a lathe, building up a central boss to bolt the two halves to, and then I simply cut off the outside with a, with a grinder. Um, I then made two uh, flange plates with some cardboard-aided design, uh, which is about the level I work at. I should learn some proper CAD, but I, I'd never get round to it. Uh, but I like this method anyway, um, and that's my... Um, transmission unit uh, assembled and, and ready to go, um, which I think is, is quite neat. Um, the, the thing I had to do that, that was quite technical is get the two shafts aligned, because the, if they're out of alignment, you get a lot of, of wear on, on the clutch blinds, which I've seen, as, as I mentioned in a previous life, when I was helping a guy mend and repair uh, homegrown conversions. So, so that, was, that was it. But the thing that the, the whole presentation kind of hinges round uh, is the inverter and there's many choices because many electric vehicles have inverters I've got a list there of some uh, I've chosen the Prius for various reasons uh, partly because they're very cheap the scrap price is about 200 pounds the is it Aorus the, um, there's the other hybrid that, pro, uh, that Toyota do that's um, less less sought over, so you can get an almost identical inverter for about £100. Um, and the approach the Open Inverter Forum are using is, is, is they've realised that the inverters are in three distinct layers. Um, you've got the power components, these are the high voltage, high current uh, transistors, the power components, the IGBTs, and there'll be smoothing capacitors as well. Then there's the middle layer, which is the power components, Power, power component control, which has very fast switching edges, so you get very, very little losses in, in your IGBTs. Uh, you've got overload protection, so it doesn't explode. You've got shoot through protection, because um, I'll explain that on the next slide. Um, the, it has to have, you know, it has to be controlled from low voltage, which is, should we say, the car side, controlling the high voltage side, and you need good isolation from that, because. You, you can't have 400 volts flows floating around a vehicle. And then on the top, I've referred this to as the brain bits, and that's there to communicate with the rest of the vehicle. It's there for reading the motor resolver for the shaft position, which is an uh, important functional part, and it's for producing the switching sequences on the output that result in the rotating magnetic field and motor spin. Um, I have to speed up a bit. The, so, so this is a, a schematic of the... the should we say the power side? It's, it's very simplified. But you can see there's two, the, the, the two gray, gray modules are two three phase power stages. For, in the price, it has a, two motors. It has a motor, G, motor generator one and a motor generator two, and they spin in opposition to generate all the motor forward and reverse um, movements. That's, that's a subject in itself. But you get those, and then on, on the, the left, you've, in, in the yellow part, you've got a, a boost buck con controller, and that converts the battery voltage into the high voltage bus. Uh, so, so that can, so the battery is about nominally 250 volts. The bus voltage can go up to over 600 volts, not that it ever goes there much, but we've got this device within it. Um, and if you flip, to take it apart and flip it over, you, you've presented with this, the, the big shiny thing on the right-hand side of the, the right photo is the inductor for that power converter. And on the left-hand side is the 12-volt um, or 14-volt uh, DC to DC converter for running the rest of the vehicle, the lights, the heater, the radio, heated seats, and, and yeah, you know, all the other stuff like that. Um, and, and that's quite capable. That's, that's like 120 amps of 14 volts. Uh, so it's a very useful bit of kit. But when I joined the Open Inverter Forum, everyone was saying, oh no, they say, if I connect this to my DIY battery, um, it doesn't work because it's not within the price battery range of 80 to 235 volts. Therefore, we can't use it. And, and there was all manner of talk about that. So what I did, and, and this is my input to the open source world in, in here, and I've I'm sort of rather proud of it, is I reverse engineered the input stage of this DC to DC converter and um, worked out you could change the feedback resistors um, and then you could get it to cut out 
at the voltage you wanted it to, and I also looked at the spec of the components of that, that part and um, realized that, that the input to that can go as high as the high voltage bus. So you can, you can connect it to your 400 volt battery and that's fine. Um, and the, the actual hack is, is how, how do we make it work for us? Uh, we've got all these protocols going on in all these electric cars and, and to, to reverse engineer that is, is both tedious and difficult and it's proprietary knowledge so you won't ever know if you've got it right. So the open inverter approach is to remove the brain part that I just spoke about, is to just take that out, to say, right, we're not going to use that, we're going to use our own one and put our own one in. And within the Prius converter, because that particular one has got this, this, the distinct layers that are in distinct circuit boards, is you can pull one out and put your own one in. And on the right-hand side, that is a, a board that's produced by one of the guys on, on the open inverter forum. You, you can get all the firmware for it and design files but he also sells them as well. So you, you, you can buy that as, a, as, a, as, a, as an off-the-shelf thing, take your Prius converter apart, unplug a circuit board, plug that one back in, put the lid on, and it's yours. You, you, you connect your battery management system, uh, control signals, your, your, your throttle, your brake pedal, um, and, and a few other things, and, and off it will go. It's also Wi-Fi enabled, so you configure it via a web page on, on your laptop. Um, Let's briefly cover charging, so I'm running out of time. Um, I want an option on charging. Uh, the, the ones available are AC charging, which is type two, or the socket in your house, CCS DC charging, or Shidemo DC charging, which is falling out of favor. Um, one way is to use a pre-built module out of a Leaf or an Outlander, and I believe the control of those, the control codes for those, the CAN bus uh, signals are known, so you can make those work yourself. Um, but going back to that, that schematic I just put up, if you look at this um, buck boost converter in itself, that can have 250 volts on one end and 600 volts on the other. So there is the, the potential to use that to charge your battery straight off the mains. Um, obviously, it's a non-isolated charger, so you have to be careful with your insulation, which you should be being careful with um, yourself. And commercial views, uh, sorry, the, the other one is to use the in motor as an inductor in a voltage converter using the, the main car inverter, which is something the, the Zoe uses, I think, which is why when you hear a Zoe, when it, or see, see a Zoe parked up and charging, it's quite noisy because it's using the motor as a, uh, an inductor and, 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 and that's obviously uh, producing some sound. Uh, the, again, coming back to the open inverter forum, is the other way of doing it is to use an existing module. To use an existing module, and 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 they've they've picked for various reasons the BMW Lim module, which is a local integration module, and and that controls the protocol to the CCS charger, which is a roadside charger, and um, and the. the the LIM module takes very simple or comparatively simple CAN bus signals from the main car controller, and then this LIM module converts it into the incredibly complicated multi-layered, multi-layers of abstraction into the CCS charger, and we can control that. Um, I, I was going to talk about steering, but I've, I've run out of time. Um, smaller things, I was chatting, chatting to the hacky, verse, hacky racers earlier, so I put some smaller converters up, so I got Honda IMA converter, BMW i3, i3 um, charger inverter, because the i3 has a range extender engine in it, and, and then I put up a Kia 10 kilowatt motor alternator, which is again, it's not an alternator as you'd imagine it, it's a three-phase motor with a resolver on it, and, and then the power control is done by uh, an inverter, which is the one on the extreme right. Um, my closing notes are, I shouldn't have to say this, but because there's been uh, a vo vo vocalization of this on the Open Inverter forum, is the developers uh, are not your, your support line, um, don't contact them, well, not, not don't contact them, their inboxes are full, they're fed up, so they would rather, and they voice this themselves, which is why I'm repeating it, they'd rather you went on the forums, because the forums are very active. Uh, I mean, this is not a drop-in solution, so there's work, it works, but it's a work in process. And uh, lastly, um, 
there should be a page of resources. So if you want to follow any of this up, you can. Um, so, whoops. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I've got some stickers I want to give out afterwards that I'll be outside for, but um, th thank you very much. <laughs>